one of the songs somebody wanted was New York to Nowhere. And that's a, an MXPX song off Life in General. But the whole catalyst behind the song, New York to Nowhere, was we were on tour. We were leaving New York City. It was probably the first time we ever played New York City. That's why everything was so fresh in my mind. Um, we played CBGB and we played we played like this showcase show at CBGB and on the way there in our van um, the owner of Tooth and Nail Records Brandon Evil was in the car and he was in the middle he was I was driving so I'm doo -doo 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 driving and like we're like where do we go like, there's no GPS or anything so like we're looking at a map trying to figure out how to find CBGB and uh, I'm driving and then all of a sudden Brandon Evil right here he's like backseat driving but getting up in my in my grill he goes turn left right here and so I'm like okay and I turn left and I didn't look I just went for it I wasn't very smart back in those days I signed a lot of contracts I probably shouldn't have signed and so on and so on and and this is just one of those things Brandon Ebel from Tooth and Nail tells me to turn left I turn left immediately smash a car slams into us t-bones us because I had turned in the middle lane instead of in the left lane, I turned left. And so, boom. All right, great. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't that bad. Like, no one was hurt. It was all good. We all, like, pulled over to the side of the road and we're, like, freaking out. Um, none of us are 21 yet. Um, uh, I'm 18. Tom's 18. Yuri's 19. Um, we have our roadie, Rob, there. And we have, uh, you know, Brandon Ebel had flown into New York, to, and so we had picked him up or something like that at his hotel. Anyway, so, so we're freaking out in the van, going, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? And this guy comes up, he's a little scary, he looks like a Jamaican guy, he's kinda got like dreads, and he's like, man, what the hell, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm so, like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm a little kid, and so, I'm like, all right, um, and he's like, I don't want to deal with the cops. What can we do about this? And so we're like, just hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And we're like, what should we do? Should we, should we just like pay him a bunch of money? <laughs> we're like, okay, let's give him $500. So we like went into our merch money and we gave him $500. He's like, okay. And so he went away and no fault on my insurance. We got our little fender bender fixed later. It was all good. I'm sure that that was probably the van that face to face destroyed. So uh, it's good. It's good that face to face destroyed it at the end of the day. I'm sure. So uh, <laughs> so anyway, I'm still not even to New York to nowhere. So we finally get to CBGB and they're like, all right, you're playing at 2 a.m. I mean, we get there at like seven o'clock. We load in, we're ready to go. We're playing at 2 a.m. and there's just a grip, there's a stack of bands on before us and none of which any of us had ever heard of. So, all right, we'll just wait. They're like, well, you can't wait in here because this is a bar. You have to wait outside in the van. So we waited in the van and we actually, there was a one little section that we were allowed to hang out in, but it just wasn't near the bar area. It was back near the bathroom. And if you go into the bathroom, I can't remember if you walk downstairs to the bathroom at CBGB, but you go down and then you open the door to the toilet and you look up because the toilet is sitting on a pedestal. It's sitting up high on a throne. So if you were to walk in and see somebody sitting, you'd look, you'd have, you'd like see right into their midsection. Like you. <laughs> so that was an interesting place to say the least. Um, but you know, we were really young. You know, we were young, we hadn't seen much of the world at that point. Um, really just trying to, just trying to take it all in. And uh, CBGB did not disappoint. We played, we rocked out. I felt like we were the best damn band in that venue on that night. And uh, we really felt good about it. We, we played well. We had a great time in New York, aside from the Fender Bender almost getting killed. Uh, we ended up, so, so, bye, bye everybody, bye New York. We're driving from New York to nowhere. We're driving so far um, and it was winter time and all of a sudden we're, we're driving through Pennsylvania on the turnpike or on like the main highway there and 
it's just all these semis are trying to get up this hill and they just start sliding back. And so there's just cars, as far as you can see, stacked up and it's freezing. So we all just park and we're waiting and there's no internet, no cell, no smartphones, no cell phones. I mean, we had a pager at this point, I think. So we had the car on because it was so cold, but then we had at some point, we had to turn the car off to save gas um, because we didn't know how long we were gonna be there. So we're just sitting there and sitting there and I'm just like, man, going nowhere fast. I start writing lyrics. I'm writing, I pull out my guitar, I go out into the trailer, pull my guitar out. <laughs> And I play a song. I play this song. I'm sure it didn't sound quite like this when I did it, but mm. this is New York to nowhere. And we finally did get to our destination, which was somewhere in Illinois, in this town that was very much um, an indu industrial type town. I can't remember the name of it, hence nowhere. But the whole place smelled like like a slaughterhouse, like really just terrible. So it's probably better that I don't remember the name of the town. And it wasn't Chicago, it was somewhere outside Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, that's the basics right there and and it, you know a lot of those songs that we wrote there that I had you know wrote on those tours those that first year of touring became songs on life in general you know it was a whole new experience for me and and the rest of the guys Tom and Yuri uh, to travel the country one but to also play every night you know getting to sing and play every night was a you know groundbreaking as, a, as an entertainer as a musician something that I didn't really realize uh, would make such a huge difference. But um, you know, the more you do something, the better you get at it. So that's how we took such a leap from to teenage politics to life in general. So. Mm -hmm. 